All right. Well, good morning, everyone. We're a couple of minutes after 1130, so we'll uh, we'll get this started just so that uh, we're respectful of everybody's time. I uh, want to thank you for joining Rumsey's ongoing webinar series hosted by the product specialists here at Rumsey Electric. My name is Sean Huber. I'm one of the automation, automation systems group managers here at Rumsey. Today, we have one of our drive specialists discussing the topic of successful PowerFlex 70 and 700 migration. Uh, maybe a little bit of uh, other products uh, tossed in there as he goes through this. So with that, I would like to introduce Jared Roberts, who resides in our Bethlehem office. And uh, I will turn it over to you, Jared, and let you take over. Okay, thanks, Sean. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for joining today. My name is Jared Roberts. I'm one of the drive uh, product specialists here at Rumsey. Been uh, working as a, uh, a drive specialist with Rumsey for um, over seven years. And uh, prior to that, I uh, supported a different manufacturer's drive product. So uh, moving on today's agenda, um, we're gonna start off with covering the uh, product life cycle of the architecture class drives. Um, next, we're gonna go into an overview of the latest offering for the architecture class, the PowerFlex 750 series drives. And uh, lastly, we're going to uh, move on into covering and discussing different migration considerations and, uh, and options available. So starting off with the life cycle status definitions, um, Rockwell identifies each product's uh, current life cycle stage so that we can manage uh, a transition from your existing products into newer technologies. So on the far left hand side in the dark green, um, the first uh, product you know, stage here would be uh, the active products. This would be considered the latest product offering uh, available for that category. Uh, the next would be active mature products. Uh, and these are products that have been out in the market for a long time. Uh, they're still available and supported but uh, a newer product exists in that same category, okay? And in the yellow there, end of life, uh, these products, basically uh, a discontinued date has been announced and uh, it's recommended to, to make last time buys and begin uh, you know, planning or considering your migrations to, to an active product. And then lastly, in the red, the uh, discontinued products are no longer manufactured uh, or available for sale. So uh, this chart here shows the current life cycle status of the architecture class PowerFlex drives. So starting at the top, the PowerFlex 750 series, we have the 753, 755, 750T drives, all are active as they are the, the latest product offering from, from Rockwell for the architecture class. Okay, below that, the PowerFlex 70 standard drives, um, like the uh, NEMA 4X wall machine mount drive, are considered active. Um, the PowerFlex 70 package drives, however, um, those have reached end of life and uh, will be moving to discontinued status in January of next year. The, um, the PowerFlex 700 drives below 250 horsepower are considered active mature, and all the other drive products listed, uh, the high horsepower PowerFlex 700s, uh, active front end, 700H, and 1336 series have all been uh, discontinued, okay? And on the right-hand side, there's a few column, uh, columns there uh, titled migration enablers. There's uh, notifications that Rockwell puts out about the life cycle status, uh, commercial programs, and different manuals that help us to um, you know, plan and uh, and and migrate to to new products when that time comes, and we're going to go into those those uh, different uh, documents later on in the presentation as well. So to clarify further on the packaged uh, seventy drives, the um, only the the packaged drives are are being discontinued 
in January of 2021. The standard panel mount NEMA 4X, NEMA 12, and flange mount PowerFlex drives will remain active products. The only drives mounted in the enclosures, the, the standard package drives or the fan and pump package drives are going discontinued. Rockwell has an online life cycle status search tool available on their website. Um, it's uh, a way to, to basically get the life cycle product data on um, your specific uh, products that you have. So you simply just you know enter the catalog number of the, the item you're looking into, and uh, it should give you the information on that product. So why migrate? Aside from the obvious reason that the product, spare parts or repair options may uh, no longer be available, uh, what other reasons are there to migrate, right? So uh, some other reasons may be uh, improving performance, uh, performance rather, and uh, increasing uptime. So one way of doing this will be moving to new products like the PowerFlex 750 series drives. So the 750 series, uh, are designed to meet today's requirements. They have features like enhanced safety, premier integration, uh, advanced diagnostics, and flexible, flexible packaging options, uh, which provide uh, application flexibility, integration, and uh, ease of use. This slide shows all of the drives in the 750 series family. Um, you can see over on the left hand side with the 753 and 755, and also the uh, 750 T, 755T products, all considered uh, 750 series. Um, the next few slides, we're going to give an overview of each product. So the 753 is considered one of the more general purpose drives of the PowerFlex 750 series. It's offered in uh, panel or wall mount drive uh, with embedded I.O and is available up to 400 horsepower. The 755 drive has embedded Ethernet IP and is available in panel mount and floor mount configurations all the way up to uh, 2,000 horsepower. The 755 is capable of handling more advanced performance applications in positioning. It also uh, features uh, it has different features like automation, uh, automatic device configuration, and embedded motion instructions, uh, that which which enable it to handle the the positioning and everything discussed here or mentioned earlier. The PowerFlex 755T drives offer improved performance with specific solutions for regeneration, low harmonics, and common bus systems. The, uh, the 755T, uh, they have a newer total force technology, which uh, has increased performance capabilities, adaptive tuning, and uh, predictive analytics. The PowerFlex 755TL is the low harmonic version. It's an active front end drive. And as you can see at the top of the slide, it's available in a, in a very wide power range. The 755TR is a regenerative drive. The TR can actually transfer energy back to the line from the load uh, that is regenerating. So the R uh, is for regenerative, but, um, but the drive also has low harmonics and power factor correction, just like the PowerFlex 755TL. And, uh, this reduces energy expenses and uh, improves productivity. The PowerFlex 755TM um, is a common bus inverter and in, in bus supplies. So the TM is used in a coordinated multi-motor common bus system. So we would have a, um, a bus supply large enough to supply power for all of the inverters in the lineup. And then we'd have, a, like I mentioned, a, a coordinated multi-motor type system for, for a, a TM drive solution. Okay, so the next part of the overview uh, will cover different option modules available 
for the 750 series drives. Most of the 750 series option modules and accessories uh, can be used across all of the, uh, the models and power ratings in the 750 series or the 750 family. Um, the drives can also allow use of some third party modules. The PowerFlex 755 has five option slots available for adding modules, and uh, it also has embedded Ethernet IP. The PowerFlex 753 only has three option slots available, but it has uh, some embedded I.O. This slide uh, details the amount of I.O. that is standard on the 753. Drive. You can see in the left hand side of the slide, the 753 has a few digital inputs, uh, relay out, and, and analog as well. Um, and that's all on the, the main control board of the 753 as standard. At the bottom of the slide, you can see both drives are capable of adding IO option cards to accommodate additional IO. IO. I.O. option cards are available um, for adding analog and digital I.O. to meet your requirements. So um, if you needed 24 volt DC or uh, 120 volt control voltage, those option cards exist and you can actually use uh, you know, multiple at one time. Uh, as mentioned earlier, the, the 750 series also supports third party modules. Um, one example would be Spectrum Controls offers different analog modules that can, can be configured using Rockwell's drive configuration software, CCW. Um, the drives also have different enco encoder modules for supporting feedback devices. So there are three different uh, feedback option modules available. Uh, one notable here with the star by the universal feedback card cannot be used with the PowerFlex 753. Um, this card is ideal or more ideal for higher performance or positioning applications. And therefore it, it must be used with the 755 drive. Uh, the 750 series also has different safety options to protect, uh, or protect personal and uh, personnel and assets rather. Um, the safe torque off module removes rotational power uh, from the motor without shutting down the drive. So we don't need to power down the drive to safely, you know, uh, disable the output. The safe speed monitor allows uh, access to parts of the application while there is still limited motion. And the network safety option eliminates the need for wiring and additional safety related hardware by using a network. This slide shows compatibility for the different safety option modules. Um, notice the network safety or network safe torque off uh, module can only be used with the PowerFlex 755 drive. And there's a number of different nodes here depending on your application and uh, you know different actions that need to be taken into consideration when using any of the any of the safety modules. To maintain uh, drive control and communications in the event of mains power uh, being removed, the PowerFlex 750 series also has a 24 volt DC auxiliary power supply option. So this uh, power supply cord, uh, when used in the 750 series drive, will maintain. Um, control power for communications or I.O. in the event that you lost main power. This slide shows the, uh, the different communication options supported. Um, you can see that there's specific 2750 series um, communication cards, and those are um, you know, designed specifically for the 750 series drives. But there's also uh, 20 COM modules list on the list, and uh, those older uh, 20 COM series modules are uh, also supported in the 750 series by using the 2750 COM carrier option card. 
the uh, the twenty com can mount onto that, and then it can reside in uh, one of the racks of the the seven fifty series and, and used for the communication protocol. The next portion of the overview will focus on the seven fifty series drive features. So we're going to cover uh, just briefly premier integration, automatic device configuration, and some others. Premier integration. Um, Studio 5000 can be used for drive programming when, when uh, integrated into a system with uh, a Logix controller. So Logix provides additional features such as um, using add-on profiles uh, for the drive. So it automatically creates uh, you know, device parameters, control tags. Those are automatically created in the, uh, in the program by using Logix. And additionally, uh, another feature, automatic device configuration. So this slide uh, is an animation really to help explain the features of automatic device configuration. If uh, we're using uh, a Logix controller with Studio on a network with the, the PowerFlex drive up and running here, and we happen to lose one of the drives, um, if it, no technician or engineer is available with software or are capable of programming the drive itself, uh, we would simply replace uh, replace that product with a new drive. And upon power up, the drive will automatically receive an IP address. Um, the controller will then uh, flash the firmware to match what is in the program and then uh, proceed to download the actual drive configuration and the, the drive will automatically be back up and running without any intervention. So no one actually needs to know how to, to uh, you know, program the drive parameters, whether it be with software or using a keypad or whatever it might be, and the drive is back up online. There are also several predictive maintenance parameters available in the uh, 750 series drives. Uh, these parameters can track run times or cycles for uh, several of the internal components on the drive itself. There are also parameters available we can configure to keep track of um, runtime for motors or the machines and notify for bearing or lubrication maintenance, for instance. These can all be configured in several different ways, uh, whether it be just the, the drive him itself or uh, configuration software, whether, whether it be CCW or in, in Logic Studio. 750 series drives also have uh, embedded device logics capability. So this provides the ability to function as a standalone system or operate along with a controller. So the, the device logics can be configured using a logics editor in uh, CCW, Connected Components Workbench, or Studio 5000. And it uses uh, either function block or ladder logic programming. So the device logics operates or can operate independently of the controller, reading inputs and, and writing outputs on IO option cards, or um, you can also use parameters and data from um, other types of option cards to kind of, you know, process and, and complete functions. I'd like to move into the different packaging options available for the 750 drives. As we mentioned earlier, the PowerFlex 753 drives are available in panel mount and, and uh, per panel and wall mount options. The, uh, the 755 drives are available in the panel, wall mount, or floor mounted options as well, since they go and have a wider power range. The wall mounted drives are available up to 400 horsepower. Um, drive options are available for open or panel mount design. The panel mount drive has a an option to add a NEMA one kit, which um, allows it for you know keeps it or makes it able for wall mounting. Rather, um, there's also a flange mount drive option and a NEMA twelve drive. All the drives have kind of formal coding as standard on their on their components. The 755 drives, 350 horsepower and larger, are offered in 
uh, floor mounted design. So the floor mount drives are also available with options to include drive circuit breaker or disconnect as shown on the right. Uh, typically we refer to those as package drives, but th these drives are available in a NEMA 1 or NEMA 12 enclosure ratings. So it's giving some uh, fur further detail on the floor mounted drives. Um, anything with a frame size eight and larger um, are going to be a rollout design as shown here on the right hand side. Um, these drives were designed for ease of installation and maintenance, as we can see by the um, the, the rollout design there. The, the power structure actually racks out from the drive, giving it access to the, the bus behind it for wiring and also easy access, access to any of the power components. Um, they also have added monitoring and troubleshooting features, uh, which provide status information for fuse, fan, and other components. So moving on to package drive options, uh, we also have the ability or options available to have drives mounted in uh, inside of an enclosure complete with circuit breaker or fuse disconnect and uh, and adding other options as well. So uh, these pre-engineered drives are available in different NEBA ratings and have selectable options to meet uh, different requirements or, or, or what you, you need for your application. Uh, the drives can be configured in proposal works as there's a screenshot in the top right there of a configuration window in proposal works tool or by requesting a quote to us. So if you have proposal works, you can go in and see what options are available. Um, if you, if you'd rather, you can simply, you know, contact us and let us know you have, uh, have a, um, an application and we can go over the requirements and, and put something together for you. We also have the option to do uh, custom or engineered solutions. Um, these drives can be engineered for situations where like uh, examples like space or temperature is an issue, or perhaps uh, you may need a, a custom back panel for replacing an old flange mount 1336 drive. Um, you know, we, can, we can actually uh, design a drive on a new panel that would fit into that existing enclosure. Uh, another example would be the old MCCs, if you're looking to old, uh, upgrade your old drive buckets to a uh, new PowerFlex drive. So in this part of the webinar, um, we will discuss the uh, migration considerations. So um, we're going to cover different resources available to aid in migration and, uh, and drive selection considerations. So. Um, we're also going to cover at the end uh, any pro, uh, commercial programs that are that are available. So Rockwell has several different resources available to assist in migration planning, uh, product selection, and installation. These documents are available from down for download from the, the Rockwell website. Uh, starting at the top of the slide, um, there's a, a bunch of different guides available. The, the first one is the low voltage selection guide, which assists in the selection of, of, of active drive products. Okay, so it'll let you know what what solutions are available, the latest products in the drive families. The uh, other uh, items that are listed in, in the, under the guides are uh, specific for products themselves. So the first one, the PowerFlex 700 to 750 series drive migration guide is available and, and it will assist in, in planning your upgrade, okay? So there's other product specific uh, guides mentioned there as well. There's, there's this one for the 700S, 700H, and even the 1336 drives. Below that are uh, migration solutions. The first one, uh, I think we mentioned earlier here, the product life cycle status tool. Um, there's also some other documents that uh, go into detail about you know, um, other products that have dis been discontinued here. Below that, there's product specific manuals that uh, give you all the information, whether it be uh, technical or installation or programming related. 
And at the bottom, um, last but not least here, the wiring and grounding recommendations manuals, which we recommend referencing anytime you're going to do uh, replace a drive or you know installing a new product. Okay, so using the uh, the PowerFlex 700 to 750 series drive migration guide uh, as a reference here, we're going to cover some drive selection considerations. Um, as stated earlier, the purpose of the publication is to assist in migrating your existing 700 drives to the latest PowerFlex 750 series. Um, so we're not going to cover um, the entire migration guide here today. Uh, instead, we're going to list some examples of information available to you uh, to help with your upgrade and, and some considerations to make. Just let you know uh, what kind of information you know is supported in the manuals to help you uh, you know along in this process. So the first chapter, drive selection considerations, compares the features of the PowerFlex 750 series drive to the PowerFlex 700. Uh, it's important to consider the differences between the 753 and 755 drives when selecting a replacement for the 700. Um, earlier in the presentation, we mentioned the 753 and 755 uh, have a different number of option slots. So we'll be sure to select a drive that will accommodate all the option cards required for your application. Um, the PowerFlex 70 and 700 drives had factory installed options, um, and most times those were those options were designated in the drive catalog string itself. Um, it's a little different for the PowerFlex 750 series. Options and accessories are all ordered and installed separately. So you know, um, if you have option cards in the 750, or you would like a, a certain I/O or whatever, that would be um, it would be something you would purchase separately and install on your node. Uh, differences between the 700 and 750 series hardware hardware enable function are, are also shown in the migration guide. So digital input six of the PowerFlex 700 and 700 VC drives uh, can be configured to act as a hardware enable. The 750 series drives use digital, digital input zero for the hardware enable um, and uh, removing a jumper from the main control board of the drive will force uh, digital input zero to act as the enable input. Migration guides also include uh, tables for comparison of the specifications and features between the drives. So this table shown allows you to confirm the new product ratings and features will work for your application. So um, in this table, we can see the 700 and 750 series drives have the same normal duty overload rating. This is an example. Here in this table, they're uh, comparing the actual drive current ratings. So the drives are grouped by voltage and horsepower. And uh, you'll find that the PowerFlex 750 series drive current ratings are equal or greater than the 700 series drives. So in this section of the chapter one, uh, titled PowerFlex Drive Conversion Guide, there are uh, tables for comparing the drive dimensions themselves. So in the table prior with ratings, there were um, frame sizes listed. If we look here, the dimensions for each frame size are being compared. Um, and uh, we can see how the, the different frame size match up. Um, and we notice if we actually add the NEMA 1 kit to the 750 series, the, uh, it actually increases the drive dimension. So an explanation of the control terminals is also included in the migration guide. The PowerFlex 700 drives have a standard amount of IO embedded on their main control board. Um, we can determine the control voltage of the PowerFlex 700 by looking at the catalog string as shown over here on the image on the right. We have um, the uh, catalog string 
placeholder there, K, designates the actual control voltage for the I.O. For the 750 series, we can tailor the I.O. to actually meet our application requirements. We simply add or remove I.O. modules accordingly. So uh, this adds flexibility since we can use different control voltages in multiple modules if necessary. So the migration guides also list um, additional resources available for related products. Uh, it may be necessary for um, or to reference, you know, um, installation or user manuals um, for specific products. So in that migration guide, it will in fact uh, list the um, the other related product manuals that may be necessary uh, throughout your migration. Um, and and again, as usual, I mean these are all links, but. Uh, you know, all of these documents are available at the Rockwell Automation website for download. I'd also like to take a moment and uh, mention any commercial programs. So Rockwell is currently running the power modernization program. Um, so the power modernization program is designed to help you migrate your MCCs and VFDs. Um, there are possible incentives to move from older products to, uh, or competitive products even, to the active drives and SMCs. Uh, some of those are listed down here in the, near the bottom. So um, if you uh, want to find out more information or see how you qualify, uh, feel free to contact your sales representative or, or one of our specialists. So, no, I didn't hear any questions pop up throughout, but uh, we have any questions? Well, I will say, Jared, there's definitely no shortage of documentation that Rockwell put out for, for upgrading, uh, or everybody can do what I do, which is just call one of the drive specialists, because there's an awful lot to read through there. Um, but yeah, with that, uh, open it up. Any any questions or, or issues that anyone has seen as far as uh, Upgrading any of the older, uh, older products to the to the newer products that you'd want to bring up. I mean, a couple of the ones that I guess I can say specifically, Jared, is just double checking some of the dimensions. Um, if you went from a couple of lifetimes ago of products from the you know you had mentioned the thirteen thirty sixes on on up. Uh, the drives were almost always historically smaller. Um, the newer, uh, the newer they were. Uh, some of the seventies and seven hundreds that we've ran into, uh, you do have to be a little more cautious on some of the dimensions, depending on where they're fitting, um, because those drives were were pretty world class uh, for their time. And even the newer products we have now sometimes aren't always the same depths and. Um, you know, that's probably the bigger thing I've seen with this last generation of upgrades. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, especially uh, to your point there, the smaller, the the lower horsepower rating, 70 and 700, they had a, a really small footprint. And uh, with the rack type architecture of the 750 series, um, even the frame two drive is uh, is is larger or has a bigger footprint to accommodate those option modules. So yes, it's something you know, especially for the whole, smaller horsepowers we want to look into prior to just, you know, trying to replace one. As you go up in size, I think they become more comparable. In fact, I think the, the 750 series ends up being a little bit smaller that way. Right, right. And then if, yeah, if you run into that case, then that's sometimes where we would go to the, the other PowerFlex series, the, the 5 series, um, if we do run into those issues. Sure. All right, I don't see anything else in the chat. Well, is there is there any um, like migration programs or loyalty discount programs if a customer came along and said, hey, I got I got 12, 13, 36s that I want to replace. Um, is there some type of discount like what used to be with the PLC 5 to the control logics? You, you taking that, Jared? Or? 
Yep, I was uh, saying, John, you want to take that? You can feel free to. Take yeah, that. So, 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 to answer your question, yes, there absolutely is. If you want to back up one slide, um, certainly, Jared. So, uh, by the way, I was going to say the other backup. So, there are uh, a multitude of commercial programs, and it's pretty hard to to delineate what they all are in a in a format like this. Um, but they they basically. Because there's so many options and years of products that Rockwell have put out, that's why we would want to talk to you directly. But yes, in simple answer, if you have you know five drives of a certain size, you know uh, Rockwell might throw in a spare drive, or you could work that into the to the back up of it. Or if there's a lot of low voltage motor control center buckets, um, you can do an upgrade of a bunch of say 1336 drives and motor control center buckets. And and get um, you know spare parts and components for the rest of you know for other pieces of the NCC. The challenge we run into, um, and obviously didn't do a, a great job here in in the aspect of the commercial programs, is every application is a little bit different. Um, but that's where if you if you reach out and talk to you know one of our drive specialists or um, or your salesperson. We can definitely make sure you get into the right program that makes it advantageous to, to upgrade. Um, and I think that's some of what you know we are seeing, or at least in my personal experience, is a planned migration always goes better. 99 out of 100 times goes better than an emergency migration um, when you're just trying to shoot or something. And so the answer is yes. Uh, just give us a call, and there are many programs that. Rockwell's rolling out, and that's where you see at the bottom of this slide. They're rolling out those programs for any of those products, and it's it's in place uh, on uh, up until September 30th of 2021, so the uh, the end of Rockwell's next fiscal fiscal year for this fiscal year. Okay, thank you. And hopefully in the process of doing that, you can, you know, add some benefits of safety or some maintenance uh, benefits and stuff, especially in, in the world we're in where everybody wants more information all of the time. So. Sure. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Um, any other questions out there? That was a good one. All right. Well, with that, um, Jared, if you want to flip to the next one there, you have uh, Jared's contact information. If you deal with any of our other uh, specialists, um, feel free to uh, reach out to them or our salespeople and be more than happy to get back to you with information. So with that, I appreciate everybody's time and have a great rest of your day.